Jujutsu is underrepresented. In the first episode of Combat Clarification Grappler Baki Styles Explained, I wanted to strike a balance between real-life history, the style as presented in Baki, and the style in other media, but I felt the final product leaned way too hard into real-life history. For this video, I'll lean the opposite way in an attempt to course correct. Special thanks to Shadow Rules Always for the suggestion to do Japanese Jujutsu as originally planned, I appreciate your support. Grappler Baki has representatives of many unique and diverse styles across the series, such as the iconic karate, grappling styles like judo, greco-roman, pro wrestling, shoot wrestling, and catch as catch can, weapon and anti-weapon styles like bujutsu jujutsu, military combatives, and mukakuri ryu ninjutsu, and even just brute force fighting. But one style that's sparsely represented in Grappler Baki, and even less so in media on the whole, is Japanese jujutsu. Japanese Jujutsu, being one of the martial arts styles most closely connected to Japanese heritage and culture, is a martial arts style you'd expect to see heavily represented in Japanese media like anime and video games, much like its parent art, sumo wrestling, yet that doesn't appear to be the case. As we discussed in the previous video, sumo is quite popular, having several representatives in multiple major fighting games like Street Fighter and Tekken, as well as representatives in many martial arts manga like Grappler Baki in the form of both several modern and ancient sumo representatives, Kengen's ancient slash modern sumo rep, Tenkaichi's ancient sumo Hino Choko, and of course Hinomaru Zumo, an entire manga dedicated to modern sumo, which is to be expected as sumo is Japan's first major national martial art and one of its biggest sports, no pun intended. Yet Japanese Jujutsu, an art integrally tied to the history and identity of Japanese culture and martial arts, is little more than a footnote in Japan's media. Descendant arts like Judo, BJJ, and even Aikido seem to have caught the media's eye much better than Japanese Jujutsu, but Jujutsu does still have a decent standing in the likes of characters like Goki Shibukawa. Despite the current representation being good, with the fighting styles being interesting and the characters being well written, the art isn't a popular one to include in manga and anime, so the question is, why? Well, let's do a brief overview of the art of Japanese Jujutsu to potentially help to give us some perspective. The Art of Softness, Japanese Jujutsu, or Jujitsu, is a Japanese grappling-focused style that also has some rudimentary striking in the form of some punches and kicks, and mixes both soft style and hard style martial arts. While its original creator is unknown, most early styles were developed from Chinese chin na by and for samurai to use in war or civilian self-defense. It isn't an Olympic sport and has very little competition when compared to most combat sport arts, but is the ancestor art of a vast range of martial arts from more esoteric arts like Aikido, Hapkido, and Bartitsu, arts that require a stronger understanding of fighting fundamentals to be used in combat, to arts like Judo, BJJ, Sambo, and Shuto, arts that are easier to use in combat and typically teach fighting fundamentals due to their competitive nature. In essence, the style is a comprehensive collection of armed and unarmed techniques for defeating armored and armed opponents. With the focus on defeating armored opponents being the very reason for the focus on grappling, as strikes would be inherently less effective on armored opponents. The specific focuses of Japanese Jujutsu's grappling are pinning, joint locking, and throwing by using an attacker's energy against him rather than directly opposing it. With hundreds of different styles, there will, of course, be some styles that focus more on certain elements than others, such as throwing, trapping, joint locks, holds, gouging, biting, disengagements, striking, and kicking, with some schools even focusing more on weapons training like Motobe's Bujutsu Jujutsu, or the art of war, art of softness. With that said, it sounds like this would be a popular art for manga and video games. On a cultural standpoint, Japanese Jujutsu has a rich history that's tied to Japan's national identity and can lead to many interesting plot points or characters in a manga, and on a mechanical standpoint, this sounds like a great fighting style for a grappler character. It might lose points for its being anti-weapons and armor, but not only do most of those techniques still work against unarmed, unarmored opponents or can be adapted to do so easily, but there are plenty of weapon-based fighting games a la Soul Calibur where an unarmed Jujutsu fighter could serve to shake things up. So why is Jujutsu less popular than the likes of modern combat sports like Keino Jigoro's Judo from the 19th century or the pre-World War II Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Well, it could be the armor and weapons thing, but let's look into the history of the art to see if there's anything else to it. 
Jujutsu was the name given in the 17th century to the art created hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago, by samurai as a collective style that included mostly grappling techniques such as short sword grappling, or kogusoku koshi no muari, grappling, or kumiuchi, softness, or yawara, the art of harmony, or wajutsu, or yawara jutsu, catching hand, or torite, and the way of softness, or judo, as well as some striking like the body art, or taijutsu. Earlier I mentioned that jujutsu was specifically designed for unarmed or lightly armed warriors to fight heavily armed and armored opponents, but that was actually only the case from 1333 to 1573, during a time referred to in Japan as the Muromachi period. Jujutsu practiced in this way during this time, with the focus on armed, armored opponents, is called Japanese old-style jujutsu, or Nihon Koryu Jujutsu. That version of Japanese jujutsu is represented in media by the Kujin style of Kaneda Suikichi from Kengen. His style is described as focusing on having an unarmed man throwing an armored opponent off balance, and uses kicks like the Crescent Scythe and punching, body throws like falling bucket or overturning heaven and earth, joint locking throws and unbalancing throws like the lover throw, pinning, strangling, grappling, and wrestling, blocking, evading, off-balancing, blending, and escaping. While we don't see those last couple as much with Kanada, or at least we haven't so far, Koryu Jujutsu and likely Kanada's Kujin-style Jujutsu also include weapon retraining with weapons like the Tanto, or a knife, the Ryofundo Kusari, or weighted chain, the Kabutowari, or helmet smasher, and Kakushibuki, or hidden weapons, with each being a staple of Sengoku-era Jujutsu, and most closely represented in a character like Motobe Izo's Bujutsu Jujutsu, which includes some minor striking and features many joint locks and throws, but focuses on weapon retraining. The Japanese Jujutsu of today, the mainly adapted and modified Japanese Jujutsu fit to deal with unarmed, unarmored opponents, came after in the form of Edo Jujutsu. Being that people from the Edo period onward were more likely to wear normal clothes rather than armor, Jujutsu adapted from a wartime art to a Suhada Bujutsu, or a martial art that included a lot more striking, which caused Japanese Jujutsu to be less grappling focused as Atemi Waza, or vital striking techniques, were actually useful against an unarmored opponent. Every now and then, people would still use hidden weapons in Edo Jujutsu like Tantos, Daggers, or Tensens, Iron Fans, but they were generally less common. Something that was more common back during the Sengoku and Edo periods that we don't see in modern Japanese Jujutsu is Hojo Waza, also known as Hojo Jutsu, Torinawa Jutsu, Nawa Jutsu, Hayanawa Jutsu, and by many other names. Hojo Jutsu is the art of using a Hojo cord, the Sagyo or the Tatsuki, to restrain and or strangle an enemy. We actually see this briefly in the Jujutsu of Miyamoto Musashi in Bakido during his fight with Retsu as the means by which Musashi shows his dominance over Retsu by using a cloth to completely restrain Retsu. The only modern use these techniques have, though, are as used by Tokyo police in tandem with cuffs, so they've generally fallen out of style. The most famous style of Jujutsu that still practices Torinawa Jutsu is the Takanoichi school, but it's one of very few. Even more commonly used weapons like swords have fallen out of favor in modern Jujutsu, as even the Sendai and Edo lines of Yagyu Shingan Ryu Jujutsu, a school of Jujutsu famous for its swordsmanship, focuses more on the Yawara of Jujutsu since the banning of samurai and swords in the Meiji era. I guess it's just not practical to carry those weapons around anymore unless you're Matobe and you just do that. Beyond the Tokugawa era, at around 1868, we move into Gendai Jujutsu, or modern Jujutsu, with the founding of over 2,000 new schools. A lot of stuff thought of as Koryu, as ancient Jujutsu, is actually modern stuff from this era and beyond. When these styles of Jujutsu are referred to as traditional, it's more so in reference to the training methodology of Kata and the like rather than an actual age. Also, I think it goes without saying, but the majority of Gendai Jujutsu is inspired by and drawn from Edo Jujutsu, the system for unarmed combat, as opposed to Sengoku Jujutsu or the armored combat system. Being that Jujutsu focuses on throwing and restraining and has some background in weapon use and defense, the natural demographic it drew in was police officers, who would adapt it for police work, specifically in the form of Keisatsu Jutsu, or police arts, and, for all you Akoya heads out there, Taiho Jutsu, or arresting arts. Even though that man probably isn't doing a whole lot of arresting with an epitaph like The Executioner. 
While the Edo era Jujutsu evolved into police use, the Sengoku era Jujutsu in modern time has evolved into Goshin Jujutsu, or Jujutsu for self defense. This style tends to be made or developed by foreigners, and the most famous example of Goshin style Jujutsu would be something like Gracie Jujutsu, which would later evolve to become BJJ. While I won't be going into depth on BJJ in this video, an example of Goshin Jujutsu in anime and manga could be Goetsu Ryu Jujutsu in Tough, a style of Jujutsu based on Gracie Jujutsu that features minimal striking and chiefly low and ground grappling submissions. For Gendai Jujutsu, there is a present but minimum sports scene in kata competitions and interesting tournaments that are almost a mix of MMA and point fighting, and many Jujutsu techniques are taught in the Special Forces and Law Enforcement world round, but most people opt for the newer, modified Judo and BJJ due to their constant and popular competitions sharpening their talent pools and refining their skill sets. While I think the real-world popularity of Jujutsu Descendant Arts plays a factor into why Jujutsu isn't more popular in media, Kung Fu has similarly fallen out of public consciousness, so why is Kung Fu everywhere in media? Maybe it has something to do with the art itself and its characteristics that make it difficult to translate. Well, as we briefly touched on before, the main focus of the art across its many iterations and transformations has always been throwing, immobilizing and pinning, joint locking, choking, and strangling techniques, which I don't see an issue with, as plenty of grappling styles have those same or similar focuses and get plenty of representation, and even if that focus made it too similar to the other styles or might be difficult to make into a video game character due to the lack of basic striking, Jujutsu also has a temiwaza, striking techniques, that can serve as your basic punches and kicks, though that would be more so Jujutsu and not Koryu Jujutsu, but the weapon focus is also a problem for Koryu Jujutsu, well, for unarmed fighting games anyway, not so much for manga, case in point Matobe, who has the full Koryu Jujutsu style. The majority of Kung Fu representatives in media already use Shuai Jiao, Tai Chi, and Chin Na in their Quan Fa, so I don't see how a, say, karate fighter or judo fighter couldn't also include some distinctly jujutsu techniques in their arsenal at the very least. Hell, most Japanese Hakuda, Kenpo, and Shubaku systems are already distinctly rooted in Chinese martial arts. Someone could make a manga character that wants to prove that Japanese Atemiwaza is superior to its Chinese-inspired counterparts. Or a Japanese grappler who uses jujutsu versus a majority striking kung fu user. Similarly to Baki's Karate vs. Kung Fu, but add some of Garden's Twist vs. Fist. For a fighting game character that needs striking, just pick one of the many Chinese martial arts-inspired Jujutsu styles that have more of a focus on striking than directly Japanese styles. Some people may be tricked by the name The Art of Softness, and think that its lack of inclusion stems from it being too gentle, but the way of softness, or judo, is always shown to be anything but, and as Garudin shows us, jujutsu is the same. Something that's lost on people is that in making judo, dozens, if not hundreds, of incredibly lethal and dangerous techniques were removed to protect athletes competing in sport judo. Why not play that up in a fighting game where throws are harder to land but deal more damage, or in a manga where the lethality of jujutsu throws makes a fighter a veritable threat? There also might be the temptation to think that mostly grappling with a little bit of striking isn't a complete style and would make for boring fights. I don't think that's the case at all for a manga, but for a game I can see where that idea is coming from, especially with how annoying it is to deal with grapplers already. However, don't let the focus on grappling and lack of balance fool you. It's a complete style made up of five major elements. The art of blocking for, well, blocking attacks, the art of the fulcrum throw, throwing at angles of least resistance and greatest impact with the most direct line of your opponent's body to the floor, the art of the non-fulcrum throw, or throws that don't require as firm a grip, the art of escaping, or hakodori, which teaches disengagement, cutting angles, and even running away in a self-defense situation, and finally, a temiwaza, the art of striking. That's a complete fighter for a manga character, and a fighting game character with all the essentials. Blocking, a vast variety of throwing for any and all possible results and situations. Movement options for entry, exit, and even lateral movement for a 3D fighter like Tekken. And of course, punches and kicks. The only thing I can think of as being an issue is maybe the principles and characteristics of balance, leverage, and momentum to overcome opponents being hard to translate. 
But even then, Itagaki's been doing it for multiple characters through Jujutsu, Judo, Sumo, Kung Fu, Grappling, Wrestling, and all that stuff since the 90s. And though Paul's Judo is mostly a Temiwaza, Paul, a Judo fighter, has been using joint locking techniques, Kansetsu Waza, a Temi, Strikes, and Kazushi, or the art of breaking balance as a setup for a lock, takedown, or throw, for takedowns, throws, and a combination of takedowns and joint locks in fighting games since 1994. And other Jujutsu stuff like moving in a way to take advantage of the opponent's momentum and positioning is just normal fighting manga and fighting game stuff. As for the Koryu stuff, like I said, it's already been done in manga with Matobe, and you can also just put it in a weapons-based fighting game. Jujutsu uses the Rokushaku Bow, or the Six-Foot Staff, the Hanbo, or the Three-Foot Staff, the Katana, a sword, either the Wakazashi or Kodachi, both being daggers and short sword weapons, the Tanto, a, a knife, and the Jute, or a short one-hook truncheon. So there's not exactly a shortage of weapons to choose from. Now, in spite of everything I've said, Japanese Jujutsu isn't underrepresented in my opinion, it's just underrepresented in comparison to how many styles it has, and how long it's been around as well as how important it is to the country mainly responsible for the production of manga, Japan. Jujutsu has basically been Japan's number one martial art since the 1600s and had over 2000 styles even back then. So why can I really only find like 15 different representatives of Jujutsu across all of fighting games and manga? It's not like these systems are lost like a lot of Kung Fu. Styles like Araki Ryu, Daito Ryu Aki Jujutsu, Hantai Yoshin Ryu, Kamashima Shin Ryu, Kukishin Ryu, Kyushin Ryu, Sekiguchi Shinshin Ryu, Sasui Shitsu Ryu, Takanoichi Ryu, Tatsumi Ryu, Tenjin Shinyo Ryu, Yagyu Shingan Ryu, and Yoshin Ryu are some of the oldest styles of Jujutsu, and they're all still authentically practiced today. Like, each of these styles is different enough that you could literally make an entire fighting manga or fighting game with only Jujutsu fighters. You've got Araki Ryu that specializes in extremely close quarters combat, so a constant pressure character, Daito Ryu Aki Jujutsu that specializes in a more lethal and aggressive use of Aikido's Aiki, so a big counterfighter that attacks with throws, Hantai Yoshin Ryu that specializes in Gyaku or joint locks, which could be another counterfighter that deals with joint locks more, Kashima Shin Ryu, which specializes in anti-armor techniques, so that could be a giant killer character that's maybe slower and worse at getting the grip, but throws for more damage, Kukishin Ryu that's big on evasion and strike counters, so this could be your strike-based counterfighter, Kushin Ryu, which I believe is the most balanced between grappling and striking, Sekiguchi Shinshin Ryu, which is the swordsmanship specialist that goes for variety of attacking techniques, Sosui Shitsu Ryu, which is a weapon-focused style that focuses on Ayajutsu and quick strikes to accompany their grappling, Takanoichi Ryu, which we know from earlier specializes in Nawajutsu, Tatsumi Ryu, which is a jack-of-all-trades style that has things like scouting techniques, tactics, all of the kinds of mentioned grappling, long and short staff fighting, glaive fighting, spear fighting, and all classes of Japanese swordsmanship, Tenjin Shinyo Ryu that focuses on pressure point and temiwaza, immobilization methods, or tore, and strangulation techniques, shimewaza, Yagyu Shingan Ryu that specializes in basic Japanese kenjutsu, and Yoshin Ryu which is another jack of all trades that specializes in a broad curriculum. Those not only sound like they could be interesting fighters in a story, but they all sound like awesome, fun fighting game characters that even play specific roles. Virtua Fighter is probably the fighting game that features the most Jujutsu representation, with General Jujutsu and all having four representatives, but that's across 22 games from 1993 to now, and half of those are remakes and remasters. Worse yet, while Kagemaru is a strong representative featured decently prominently across most of the games, and Aoi Umeno Koji, a Daito Ryu Aki Jujutsu fighter, is also a great representative of what Jujutsu can be and how different styles of the same art can be distinct. One rep, Sugikage, Kagemaru's mom, has never even been a playable character, and the other is Onimaru, a 2-bit anime-only antagonist for the ancient Virtua Fighter anime. Dead or Alive also has some Jujutsu representations, and they're about equal with Virtua Fighter, since, while they only have two reps, Virtua Fighter really only has two reps as well. 
There is Mamiji, who does a brilliant job of showing off the grappling of Aki Jujutsu, the most popular form of Jujutsu, and, while not Jujutsu, Tamaki does a great job of showing off the Jujutsu-like throws of Aikido. Typically, Jujutsu's descendant arts are more popular in media, with Bartitsu having Sherlock Holmes as Baritsu and the likes of Mokichi Robinson and Kengen, my favorite Kengen character. Judo has no end to the different characters and entire mangas it has representing it, and BJJ is becoming increasingly more popular as it becomes more popular in the real-life martial arts world. Even still, you'll find no less represented style in media than Gendai Jujutsu. Despite the even greater diversity and polish of modern styles like the Hawaiian Danzan Ryu that features Jujutsu as a base, as well as techniques from Judo, Karate, Kung Fu, Kendo, Hawaiian Lua, and knife fighting, as well as healing techniques like Okazaka Therapy, Bone Setting, Shiatsu, Restoration, First Aid and CPR, Joint Relocation and Meditation, or German Jujutsu that's similar to Japanese Jujutsu but also features escort and arresting techniques, Goshen Jujutsu that, of course, focuses on self-defense, Hako Ryu that has basic self-defense Jujutsu and a unique pressure point-based healing method called Koho Shiatsu, Hako Denshin Ryu which is similar to Hako, both of which use Aiki like Daito, but Denshin seems to focus more on self-defense and combat prevention rather than Hako's self-protection and healing, Kumite Ryu Jujutsu, which focuses on aggressive use of Jujutsu in practical combat training, Miyama Ryu, which specializes in modern street combat, Shirinji Kan Jujutsu, or the Jujutsu Foundation, which is essentially a style of Jujutsu with a lot of influences and techniques from wrestling, Judo, Karate, Aikido, and Taekwondo, Small Circle Jujutsu, which focuses on employing dual simultaneous push-pulling actions and smooth transitions, World Jujutsu Federation, which is basically the entire sport of Jujutsu, Goshin Budo, which aims to use the Sengoku-era heritage of Jujutsu for self-defense, and 10th Planet Jujutsu, which is basically no-gi Japanese Jujutsu with a focus on kickboxing, I'm sure none of these styles have any representation of any kind in any manga or video game, which is a shame, because each of them is just as interesting as their better represented counterparts of Edo and Meiji Jujutsu. The only representation I could find for any of these is Street Fighter and Tekken both representing Goshen Ryu, the most popular of the new styles due to its connection with BJJ. Street Fighter V had Laura and her Masuda style Jujutsu, of course based on Gracie Jujutsu, though with noticeable more stand-up fighting and strikes, and the Kazama family has the Kazama style traditional martial arts, which isn't even Jujutsu by name, but it is a martial arts style used by the Kazama family that heavily uses techniques from Daito Ryuaki Jujutsu, again, to create their own Goshen Ryu Jujutsu. So, I've gone through the history of Jujutsu and the characteristics of the style, and best I can conclude as to its lack of inclusion is its similarity to more popular descendant styles like Aikido, Judo, and BJJ, its difficulty to transfer to 2D fighters, and its lack of a major popular sports scene which caused it to be overlooked, and unfortunately as well, seeing as it's definitely one of the most diverse martial arts out there. We have hundreds of different kung fu fighters, but I'm over here scraping the bottom of the barrel for jujutsu fighters. Now, I touched on it a bit, specifically with fighting game characters, but let's talk about the representation we do have. How much do we get? Is it any good? Let's talk shop. I looked as hard as I could for Japanese jujutsu reps and I found over 40 different fighters. But after removing fighters that practice descendant arts like Judo and BJJ, that number dropped to about 20. From Garadin, we have Koikichi Hata, who practices Budo, which is basically Jujutsu, Takemiya Ryu Jujutsu practitioner Juzo Fujimaki, and Soichiro Izumi. From Kangen is just Kaneda Suikichi, really. Kenichi has Mikumo and Chikage Kushinada, Akisame Koetsuji, Taiki and Naoki Yamamoto, Ishin Sayogata, Kenichi Shirahama, and Shokeno. For tough, we have the Miyazawas, so Kichi, Seiko, Kiryu, and Sono, the Miyazawa disciple Ryusei Nagaoka, and the Goetsu Jujutsuka's Genshu Ibarra and Shingo Aoi. And last but not least, we have Motobe Izu from Grappler Baki, Junichi Haneda, who's making his comeback in the manga currently fighting against Karu Hanayama, and, of course, the man himself, Goki Shibukawa. Tackling each series as listed, 
Garden, as always, does a fantastic job of portraying its martial arts. Juzo and Soichiro use the incredibly common tactic of using strikes to distract from setting up their grips, locks, and throws, and while Soichiro's King Tiger is a smidge too acrobatic for ancient Jujutsu, it's mechanically similar to a flying armbar, so still passable for Jujutsu. The rest of the Jujutsu in Garaden is 100% authentic and actually makes for an incredibly engaging combat and, of course, entertaining fight. Netame is a little weird because you're fisting a guy's mouth, but debilitating a person and striking a vital point is very old Jujutsu. And Kiriotoshi is fucking brilliant, probably one of my favorite Jujutsu moves and perfectly executes Jujutsu's practicality and lethality in a fulcrum throw. Finally, Ure Hishigi is just an armbar, pretty standard fare for Jujutsu arm locks, and Jikaburi, a throw specifically modified for maximum damage by shifting momentum, is a perfect special technique for Jujutsu. Kengen I pretty much covered before, but it's the best example of Koryu and Sengoku Jujutsu's anti-armor characteristic and one of the most authentic representations in media. Next, Kenichi. This one's a little funky because of the magic key involved, like Mikumo practices black magic, not Jujutsu. Bunshin isn't anything like anything in Jujutsu. The closest thing to afterimage effects in martial arts would be something with rapid and fluid footwork like boxing or modern karate, not the firm, more stagnant footwork of traditional Jujutsu. Underground throw is good and fine, it uses Kazushi and the user's momentum to throw the opponent, that checks out. But Thousand Year Throw is straight up that Susano Ultra Instinct bullshit from the Moro arc in Dragon Ball Super. Just straight up magic. The more authentic Jujutsu rep in Kenichi is, of course, Akisame Koetsuji. Some of his techniques are odd, niche, or borderline magical and magic adjacent, but a good 60% of his techniques are solid, authentic, honest to god Jujutsu that uses throws, joint locks, and all the concepts, like Kazushi and softness and momentum, as you'd expect. Tough is a mixed bag, like Nara Shinkage is, to my understanding, Jujutsu but it's so mixed and balanced that it's basically its own martial art entirely, and more like an ancient Japanese MMA than Jujutsu, which had some mixing, but nothing that significant and nowhere near as much striking and ground grappling as Nara Shinkage. As for Goetsu Ryu Jujutsu, it's basically Gracie Jujutsu to a T. I don't think there's another manga that does ground grappling as well as Tough, and yes, Kengen does it well, but I think Tough focuses on it more and does it better, and while Haryu is possible if not incredibly difficult, and Serpent Hold and Spider Guard are straight out of a ground grappling playbook, the Will of the Wisp is a little bit exaggerated for a pressure point attack, though in its Itemiwaza nature, it's authentic to the idea of Goshen Jujutsu. Finally, just as well we started with Garadin, now we have Grappler Baki. I guess it's no surprise that Grappler Baki is one of the best to do it. Hanada's a little iffy, as we really only ever see him using pro wrestling, but we did just see him counter Hanayama's Yakuza Punch with a shoulder throw in the most recent chapter, which is a basic Jujutsu tactic to counter one of the most common striking attacks. Receive the strike, and then use the momentum for a throw. Matobe I've talked about already at length of being the best wartime Jujutsu representative ever. Like, the man uses all the weapons, even more weapons for dirty, underhanded tactics you definitely see on the battlefield, and his grappling like his pinky finger grab attempt, and his submission attempt, and his revolving arm drag, and his elbow breaking technique are all a perfect mix of lethal and practical, with all of them working perfectly on a potentially armored opponent. Even his striking is a mix of old and new Jujutsu, with pressure point Atemiwaza style striking, as well as stuff like drop kicks to throw somebody wearing armor to the ground, dangerous as it might be for the user as well. Finally, the man of the hour, Goki Shibukawa. They don't call him the master for nothing because his Jujutsu is 100% grade A. His style is distinctly Aki Jujutsu and it is impeccable. He uses pressure point Atemi Waza with techniques like Throat Stab and Epon Ken. He throws people from their own grip, trips people from their momentum and uses the trip to throw them, uses an upward palm thrust as Kazushi for his throws, a classic tactic of his real-life counterpart Aikido Master Gozo Shioda. He uses small joint manipulation in his finger grab, a staple of classical Jujutsu. He uses brute force attacks like stomps and headbutts to initiate or finish throws, and he's a master of basically every Jujutsu-based Japanese martial art. 
He is a master of Aiki, and is most likely a master of Aikido by that token, also as he's based on an Aikido master. He was a nationalist level judoka as his base and his first martial art, and can use foot sweeps with the best of them. And finally, as we more recently learned, he even knows sumo, Jujutsu's parent art, well enough to modify the Dashinage to use the nostrils as a grip and execute the technique as an Aiki style throw. From his stance, to his movements, to his attacks, to his character being the old Japanese Jujutsu master that's secretly an old boy, despite his elderly and peaceful appearance, just everything about Goki Shibukawa is the epitome of Japanese Jujutsu. Okay, I think I like how this one turned out a lot better, because Japanese Jujutsu is one of my favorite styles of martial arts of all time, and I really do feel passionately about it. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't just a martial arts history dump, and also featured the things that got me into martial arts, seeing them in manga and fighting games. In manga panels and in anime is pretty much the only way you're ever going to see these martial arts in their purest, unadulterated form, as real-life fights are a lot messier than anime fights, with more missing, more failed techniques, more improvising, more adaptation in motion, and less complicated techniques. But for fighting games, a character has to fulfill some kind of gameplay role, and not only does that sometimes clash with a proper portrayal of the art, but also sometimes the style in game looks nothing like it does in real life. At least with manga and anime, you can start with the end result. Shibukawa throws Yanagi by his face headfirst into the ground and concusses him. From there, with your result in mind, you can simply work backwards. Well, how does he get the angle to throw him down headfirst by the face? Oh, he has to get leverage and unbalance him, so he needs something to serve as Kazushi and to shift Yanagi's momentum upward. Well, Gozo Shioda did that all the time with an upward palm thrust, and bam, you've got an upward palm thrust into a hand switch face grab, into a downward momentum shift, to a complete throw. The end result is like a comic book of martial art technique scrolls, if done correctly. Unfortunately, manga isn't really teaching anyone about Japanese Jujutsu who isn't already somewhat aware of it, and isn't blowing it into the eye of the mainstream. The closest manga characters to ever do that are the two most well-known fictional Jujutsukas, Goki Shibukawa and Akisame Koetsuji. So here's hoping Jujutsu can do as well as Judo at some point, and maybe even hold a candle to Kung Fu and Karate one day. Well, that's it everyone. Again, thanks Shadow Rules always, I hope this was as good as you'd been hoping for. Next for combat clarification, if this video can get 50 likes within the first week of my uploading it, I plan to do an NSL Kage requested explanation of Way of the Void, the martial art of Kunimatsu and Yanagi that I believe is a Baki-specific martial art, but I'm eager to start researching. Okay, everybody, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and you want to hear about the Way of the Void, and comment down below about Jujutsu and manga and fighting games. Who's your favorite Jujutsuka in manga and gaming? Did I miss anyone? Did I do Jujutsu justice? What do you think of the video in general? Let me know. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more combat clarification. I've been Red Fox, the YouTuber that would even show his asshole for a million subscribers, and this has been Combat Clarification, Grappler Baki Styles Explained. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.